Mr. Day, I suppose, because none of us are dealing with that today. Yes. Um, That's how some people's kids are, though, with, you know, can I just brush my <laughs> yes. hair? Can I have my space? Right. <laughs> all right, we'll keep it going. You guys have a good Tuesday. Thank you all for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel's helping you plan for the big events ahead. We've got a lot of big events out there, Jen, to talk about. We have Lee making waves. Uh, in the western Atlantic right yeah. now. And there's going to be impacts up and down the eastern seaboard. Mm -hmm. The impacts will be different, and of course, the specific track will make a big difference in that, and we'll talk a lot about that today. But even the St. Augustine, Florida. We're not just showing this by chance. We're actually keeping an eye on your waters. You know, those waves look a little different than they normally do, so I'm thinking we're already starting to see some of those peripheral mm -hmm. swells maybe make it in. I'm not sure about that, but... I've spent enough time on the Florida Northeast Coast to know mm -hmm. that, you know, about now is when you start to see some of those swells come in. Yes, and you'll be watching this issue up and down the eastern seaboard, parts of the Northeast. Uh, we, we already have our own problems though, before we get to the waves coming yeah. in. We've had so much rain in eastern Massachusetts here. Neighborhoods are absolutely swamped. There's flood warnings still going on this morning. Yeah, and the rain, fortunately, today we'll t get a break yeah. later on this afternoon before more rain comes in, we think, tomorrow. So, you know, catch yes. a break and uh, do what we can to clean up, I guess. Yes, more rain before we even worry about Lee. Before we leave. And that, yes. will, that, that and next rain tomorrow has nothing to do with Lee. That's the front that comes in. Yes, yes. So we'll get to all of that. Right. do want to bring you the latest on what we have right now on Hurricane Lee. And you know, we're looking at that latest advisory. It's a still a major hurricane. Winds at 115 miles per hour. So it's been pretty steady. It's likely peaked in its intensity now. We, we said that yesterday. Uh, and so at this point, it's either steady or we'll see the intensity start changing, but we'll see the character of the storm start changing as well as it moves north. The movement at the moment, though, is still west-northwest at 7. It's not moving that fast. It's been the case since yesterday. Uh, we think uh, the slow movement here is going to be part of the story and sending all of this swell and the dangerous surf and the large waves towards the east coast throughout the week. It's just sitting out here, and it's a, a fairly typical size hurricane maybe a little on the larger side. And so that's going to increase that wave concern on the coast. It is likely to be large and slow moving. The exact track and the exact strength is still yet to be determined here. This has been a hard, challenging forecast. And part of it is that we've been tracking it for so long as well, just because it's been it's been uh, around. Now, it's too soon to know the level of impacts to the U.S. and maritime Canada. So you want to monitor updates frequently. We're, of course, paying attention to every single move, every change, every hurricane hunter flight going in. Here's a look at that visible satellite which really gives us a picture of what it looks like from space and you know you see the circulation you, you look at this and you're like wow that's a you know, that's a typical the like, decent looking hurricane right here but we know a lot about the structure of it and Greg Postel is going to talk a little bit more about that in terms of where the strongest winds are the hurricane force winds extend out about 70 or 80 miles from that center of circulation uh, but the tropical storm force winds extend out more than that here we're talking more than 150 miles from that center of circulation let me go back to that real quick I clicked too fast through that here as our weather producer Abby said don't do that don't click too fast uh, here we go now we've got the winds outside Side of the circulation of the edges. You can see gusting to close to tropical storm force here, and that kind of gives you a sense of how large that wind circulation is. The hurricane hunters have been nonstop through this thing here. They've been continuing to fly their their their, uh, their flights. The NOAA hurricane hunters happen to be in right now, and we'll get more data from them as they continue to give us information. You know, but Greg, we're watching this and you know talking about what's happening right now, but we want to know where is it going and how strong will it remain? Seen, and we talked about the swell maybe being a little bigger than your used to seeing. So let's watch the forecast for Lee and take a look at the rip current risk. It's now high up and down the entire East Coast. The exception is maybe from like Melbourne Beach southward in Florida where it's moderate. It's not zero, but uh, it's moderate. Uh, remember the beach flag system and especially this point in the season where there might not be as many guarded beaches, just to less lifeguards available. Some may have gone back to college. Dangerous when it's red. Uh, oftentimes that means, you know, knee high is too high. That's about as much as you want to go when we got the red flags going. Yellow is a medium risk and rip currents are still found on days with yellow flags so make sure that you're paying attention to that risk as well here's a look at that wave forecast and you know of course the the most significant waves are going to be with the core of the system and that's more than uh you know it's hundreds of miles off the coast but we're going to see that swell on the increase and by wednesday to thursday really ramping up here in the eastern uh, carolinas especially eastern north carolina up towards virginia virginia beach we're talking up towards ocean city maryland and jersey shore you'll get your biggest waves at that
that point as well. That's Thursday into Friday. So now this is the European model and this is GFS model. I do want to talk timing for a minute. They're a little different in timing. The GFS is a little bit faster and it actually, as you saw with Greg's forecast there, moves it a more to the east compared to that track of the European model. But both have some wave energy that's going to be propagating to the coast. So that doesn't change regardless of the track. Now we take it in here as we get you into Friday up into New England, watching those waves on the increase. You're going to see that first Long Island Friday into Saturday up there on the New England coastline. And just beware of, you know, I know you might not be swimming up here in Maine, but if you're going out and you maybe you want to take in the sights here, be careful those big waves crashing on rocks. That can be a danger. Greg. Well, parts of Massachusetts. It's not because we've got another round coming. Today's a break for the most part, but we've got this front coming in and that's going to bring a lot of rain potential. <laughs> yeah, it will. With thunderstorms, maybe even some severe weather tomorrow across parts of the Northeast. So there's a lot mm -hmm. to uh, deal with, but take advantage of the weather now. We're looking pretty good overall. Now, it's not completely rain free. Central and northern Maine, we're dealing with some, but for the most part, it's drying out temporarily. Yeah, temporarily is key because mm -hmm. we're still stuck in this trough. One thing that hasn't happened is the air hasn't really dried out. Dew points are up still near 70. So, you know, it's when this next front comes in, there's still plenty of moisture to work with. Yeah, and that's going to produce some locally heavy rain, we think, with the heaviest downpours. Uh, my voice just cracked. I promise you I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> but yes, no, the front is going to be moving through. And we have to watch out for uh, significant rain. And again, as yeah. you mentioned, some thunderstorms, which could be severe along the way. Yeah, I mean, this is a decent trough coming east here. Mm -hmm. That's what we've depicted there on that graphic. And so that's going to help just wring out the moisture in the atmosphere. The rain could be heavy at times. We could see one to two inches in spots, most spots up to an inch, but locally heavier amounts. Yeah, it's hard to see on this graphic, but there are going to be, as Jen mentioned, locally higher amounts, one to two inches in spots. And we saw that yesterday. Yeah. There's no way we forecasted the amount of rain that they actually got across parts of eastern well, Massachusetts. eight inches of rain is just such an anomaly. Yeah. You know, but, but that, locally higher. That kind of locally higher amount, not to say eight inches of rain, but do expect more than one inch in some spots for yeah. sure. This forecast is through Thursday. Right. And Hurricane Lee's impacts will be front and center over the next few days, but there is no hiding the changes and that a sign of a hot day right there. Now, today we've got the front, which is kind of stationary from Texas back into New Mexico. It's going to be a focus for clouds and showers. Dallas yesterday, you actually still made it to 91 degrees. I was hopeful that you wouldn't get to the 90s, but but you did. We just didn't have that much. We didn't have enough rain and clouds around. You had some. We're going to see a bit more today thanks to this upper disturbance kind of moving right along the zone and helping to bring the clouds. Just add some lift to the atmosphere and help more clouds form and help more rain form as well. So we see that as we get through the end of the week. So keeping the zone pretty busy when it comes to clouds and showers. We may get some thunderstorms here in Arizona. That is a possibility today. You saw the clouds around in Phoenix. Phoenix, so we finally didn't go 110 or higher yesterday. Could that be it for the season? Mm, I, it should be, but I don't know. I don't know this year. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, it's nice to get a break from that ridiculous heat, isn't it? Now, we're going to be watching for some storms, though, coming into parts of New Mexico. We'll see that tomorrow into eastern New Mexico. And watching the showers out there, some of them could bring some heavy rainfall amounts. It really is going to be a more of an isolated situation, depending on where exactly the storms set up and where they train or maybe move over some of the same areas. We'll see that perhaps in West Texas, like around Abilene. Keeping an eye on you, your forecast. You, you know, Notice the storm track from Phoenix into uh, in Arizona into New Mexico. There could be some heavy rain in there and always worry about flash flooding with the desert terrain out here. It doesn't take much to cause that just because of the way the water moves over that ground, which is you know, pretty dry to start with. So we'll keep an eye on that for you uh, Tuesday today into Wednesday and Thursday and then continuing to watch the rain, which may add up here into Texas. Some of these bigger overnight clusters of storms may help do that with one to two inches of rain. Pretty widespread from Amarillo, Atlanta, Lubbock down through, say, the Abilene area where we could get two to three inches of rainfall in the forecast. Fairly well placed because it's Abilene and Point Southward that has the worst of the drought. And in general, this whole zone would be happy to see some moisture. Greg, do you want to see the uh, the big waves? Be careful. Yeah. Those waves can sneak up sometimes and crash on shore and knock you off. Sneaker waves. Sneaker we talked waves. about those earlier. Sneaker waves, yes. Well, Hurricane Lee and what we can expect from it, that's a focus of our coffee talk today. Let's get another view at this visible satellite to start. And, you know, Greg, one thing I'm noticing is just the eye. It clears out and then the clouds come over. It clears out. I mean, it's just been going through all these iterations. It's kind of sputtering. 
like an engine, yeah. kind of like starting yeah. and then stalling and then starting and stalling. It's a powerful hurricane. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But it's not the uh, well, finely tuned engine it once mm -hmm. was as a Cat 5 last week. Clearly, yeah. it has undergone some transformation. Good news there. It is not nearly as strong as it once was, but it's also a little bit bigger. Yeah. And it's going to get even bigger. And, you know, that's why we have this wave concern. And to talk, let's talk about that because the waves, even though it's hundreds of miles away from the East Coast, the waves will be on the increase, the swell first because of Lee. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're starting to see at least some of that along the Florida coast today. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot. And we're not going to see huge waves, but those longer period swells are the ones that travel pretty quickly away from the tropical cyclone. And we're starting mm -hmm. to see that along the East Coast, which brings the rip current threat up for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's why there's a high risk of rip currents here pretty much up and down the eastern seaboard. All of the National Weather Service offices are warning about that. That's, you know, first and foremost going to be the risk. The waves will be on the increase. So starting today, mm -hmm. we were looking at St. Augustine starting today, but then really ramping up into uh, up the coast into Wednesday and Thursday. And pretty big ones. I mean, look at the scale. Uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, they're going to be uh, breaking waves offshore of maybe 15 feet, maybe bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, onshore, they could be up to 10 is yes. what the forecast is. It's very significant, so mm -hmm. stay out of that water. I know the surfers, we, <laughs> they're not going to sort of follow the guidelines as uh, many of us would, but uh, just be careful out there. Yes, and then we take a look at the Northeast. And, you know, so you're going to be getting the increase in swell that happens Thursday into Friday, but then the bigger waves come in Friday into Saturday. It is going to be a marine problem with coastal flooding uh, mm -hmm. alone from the large wave run up and the swells. This is going to be something to contend with, along with the weather factors, too, that come along with it. Yeah, so big waves here, um, the rip current risk, the sneaker waves. I kind of worry about that more up here because mm -hmm. you might not be thinking about swimming, but you want to go see the beautiful big waves crashing on the rocky coast, maybe up in Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be dangerous. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you want to stay away because sometimes that wave run up can exceed mm -hmm. the normal uh, wave breaking that you would get. So just be careful out there. Yes. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the tide. So we're getting towards a new moon come Thursday and that new moon and full moon both can make the tides a little higher at high tide and, and lower at low tide. Yeah. And, you know, the, the cycle of the tides is going to be exacerbated with the uh, on combination of the lunar tide, the moon yes. phase, and also the uh, onshore wind. The, right. That's going to be a real problem. We might have had some coastal flood warnings anyway, yeah. even without a tropical system. Right. But this will just make it worse, which is always something to worry about. We're getting into that king tide season. I didn't really see any of these being classified as king tides. However, you know, we know that the new moon does make a difference. Yeah, and Lee, as it uh, we think, gets close anyway, if not very close, to New England over the weekend, uh, eastern New England. It is going to be undergoing a transition. It may have completed it by then anyway, into think of it as a big-time, powerful nor'easter. Think about what happens in the wintertime when you have a very strong nor'easter. You get the big waves. Mm -hmm. You get the coastal flooding. You get the wind damage. You, you get, get some power out. You get the power outages, trees down, mm -hmm. you, things like that. That's the kind of impact uh, in those sort of westernmost scenarios that we could see with mm -hmm. Lee uh, this weekend. Yeah, it's a closer view, and you can see how the cone now does include parts of New England, including around the Cape and up into Maine. You know, I know we always, but you can't help but look at the cone and, you know, mm -hmm. want to, to know if you're in the cone or not. But the impacts will go outside of the cone, especially with the kind of system we're dealing with. Yeah, and, you know, it's one of those things that thankfully will be moving, I think, pretty quickly by this time. It's accelerating, Lee, as it moves northward, so it's not going to linger very much. Mm -hmm. But a couple of scenarios here shown here by the European model. That's much more of a problem than the GFS solution, yeah. which is much farther east. They're a lot different. Yeah. Most of the other models go with the GFS right That's now. That's right. But look, we still have a few days, so still ironing this one out. New England. Um, you know what? We'll talk about that in a little bit, but we're going to talk about cooling coming yes. in to much of the country first. We've, we've got a pretty big fall front that yeah. is moving across the country. It's bringing changes both with rainfall and cooler and much drier air behind it. Much drier. Temperatures this morning were in the 30s in the Dakotas and parts of the Midwest. I saw Kansas City was in the low to mid 50s. Jen, once the 50s move as far south as Kansas City and Oklahoma City, fall is on the way. Yes, yes. Uh, Mid-September, here we go. We've got the front on the move. The shower's with it, too. We'll see that for you through the day today across the eastern lakes moving into the northeast tomorrow today's your off day in the northeast enjoy it it is and over the next couple days with you know through tomorrow our rainfall totals here are up to an inch they're going to be locally higher amounts because ahead of that front gen as you mentioned 
It is very moist. It is still a sort of summertime, almost tropical like air mass in the southeast. Yeah. And the northeast too. You're kind of complaining about northeast. how humid it is. Dew points are up around 70. Right. And that front will continue to move eastward and it will clear the coast eventually, but it's not going to be far off the coast when it does. It's going to get stuck uh, mm -hmm. and that could linger some rain around a little bit longer into midweek. Things are excruciatingly slow yeah. moving for sure with this front. Now behind the front, it, it will get cooler and drier. So temperatures drop off. We go about five to 15 degrees below average. The dew points drop off to even down into Texas and Louisiana. Yeah, that's good news there. It's been so hot this summer, we could welcome that. But you know what? Uh, we're talking about waves, right? Big waves. When severe storms and hurricanes hit, it's important to have the right supplies on hand. We've partnered with Energizer to bring you the essentials you need to be prepared before, during, and after the storm. Dr. McNabb has more. Uh, we'll be talking about that with the front coming in. But on the coast, it's more about the waves that we're going to be dealing with here. So the rip current risk is up starting today. We've got a red here on the map indicating a high rip current risk all the way from Florida, all the way up the eastern seaboard, up through the Jersey Shore. Um, I would say south of Melbourne, we've got a moderate. But um, to the north of there, it's high already. And that's not going to change throughout the week. If anything, it actually gets worse. The waves are going to be up as well. Here's that projected path that we're looking at. And again, the Slow movement today, tomorrow into Thursday, and then by Friday and Saturday, it really starts accelerating. And you can see that. And so it's going to mean that once we get in that time frame, you're not going to, once we start to narrow down exactly what the track is going to be, you won't have a ton of time to prepare. So you want to make sure you do that now, just in case. Always good to do that. And then, you know, further to the south, we'll be watching the wave risk. And so watching that into your Thursday and Friday when the waves really peak out here, I think on the outer banks, we'll see some of the biggest waves, perhaps up to 10 feet foot waves breaking on shore. Yes, the more significant ones will be well offshore and that's going to be a real maritime concern getting into the end of the week here. The long period swell sets in uh, continues as we get through the latter part of the week. The waves on the increase too once we get into Friday and we will see that into New England into at least the uh, first part of the weekend and then I think things accelerating at this point. So you'll be watching for the system itself to pull away but it takes time for that ocean to calm down so the waves will still be rough. Plus the fact that we've got a new moon coming on Thursday and both the full and the new moon can make tides, especially at the time of high tide, a little bit worse. So that may be a factor for coastal flooding and whether it's a trip.